the other tractor that you got from Harold was uh, the L little level. Little level, yeah. yeah. Just tell us about. Uh, well, about when I that. first met Harold, Louis Pierce told me that uh, over by Dagmar, Montana, there was part of a little devil heart bar. So when Harold came up here the first time in 1963, we went out there and there was a fender and uh, the front wheel with cement in it, one of the front wheels, and the mailbox, the crankshaft and flywheel was a mailbox then. I bought the whole works. I, I bought it before for $10 from the guy. Well, we went out and got it. And we didn't know about, I didn't know about the mailbox thing, but the guy came up with that too. Well, then he had that, but he was trying to buy the one in Oklahoma, but he, of course he couldn't get together with the guy. I don't know what the problem was. They could, they, Harold wouldn't want to pay what he wanted for it. I remember that guy's name was Nova. Do you remember the name of that town? I don't, uh, but I remember. But Ed, Ed Nolby was his name. Don Sell ended up. Yeah, place. well, uh, but anyhow, then later on, there was a, old ranch over by Rob Sark, Saskatchewan, who uh, got around a lot, and he told me north of Gull Lake there was the main one of the little two-cycle heart parts. So when Harold and Henry and I went up there, went and sat, sure enough, we went out to here was the frame, not the front end, but the back wheel and the frame of one, hmm. owned by a Smith in town. And his son lived on the farm, real nice fella. So we went to town. Well, it seemed that Bill Smith is quite a old gentleman, but he liked to have a few. And he went to Swift Current that day and uh, with his wife and his, his daughter who uh, lived with him, she's an older lady. And anyhow, and we found out that when he come back, he'd probably be pretty well organized. <laughs> well, he got back about, and he had another son called Farmer Smith, and he was just opposite. He was drinking and carrying on kind of a, uh, not, you know, kind of what, wasn't like his brother on the farm. Anyhow, got dark, turned up with light in the house. So it was for me to go up there and see him. So I went up, knocked on the door, and the lady, oh, yeah. Well, he's in his study. So I went in there and talked to him. And he told me all about the tractor. He said, when I bought the tractor, he said, for nine, uh, it was $900 outright, but if you took it on, and out 850 outright, if you took it on time, it was 900. So I took it on time and paid half. And I said, good, done more with oxen than I did with that tractor in two, in a, two months I tried to use it. He said, I, the gear rolled over first off, the pinion gear was something wrong with that. And finally, it's, the third time he said, the expert come out and he said, just let the tractor sit. They're gonna recall these tractors and they will straighten it up with you. And he said, they give him an old 3060 heart bar and he would like that. But they never picked the tractor up. And somehow during the war, the motor and the, and the uh, transmission was taken off of it. He didn't know what happened to that. Well, would you sell it? Yep, $50. Okay. Well, he said, guy is 35. Uh, next morning, and Harold and I went in, and the guy was sober. And uh, I said, no, uh, we got it for, give him $50. So we went out to get it then. Well, Harold had a winch on his truck, and um, I, we should back up a little. No, no, he wanted to pull it up in the holes. Snap the axle in the truck. Well, it was lined up to it then. So Henry uh, was a pretty good rough mechanic. Him and this boy guy's son went into Swift Current, took the old axle out to see if they get an axle. Well, in the meantime, then Harold and I, we laid up planks and we witched this thing on the truck. Well, when he come back, he had the axle and we got it. We were lucky that happened there. It could have happened to go up a hill. Sure, yeah. And that's, well, then we had that and we're looking for no motor transmission, still hoping to get the one in Oklahoma. Yeah. And one day, night, uh, Van Horn called me up from Marmot, the car guy, but I knew of him. And I knew him talking by the phone. I never met him face to face. But he was a Ford a Model T and stuff. And he said he had this old tractor that was a big wheel in the back. Hmm. He told the heart par. No, he didn't know what it was, but big wheel in the back. He'd bought it. Well, I said, I thought right away, gray. And you know, I said, well, finally, how many cylinders has it got? Well, two pointing straight ahead. Then I knew what it was. Well, I said, where is this tractor at? Well, he said, at North of Gladys. Well, what are you going to do with it? I want to deal it to you. Okay. Well, I knew I had to get him up here. And Merle Clark, 
was a friend of his and a friend of mine. Good auctioneer. <clears throat> there was going to be a gun auctioneer in town because Jack Brady had passed away and had all them guns. So I called Gordon. Yeah, you bet. He was the administrator. So I called him. Else the next day, here they were. Well, Van Horn, of course, he was like a kid in a candy store with all them Model T parts. But I finally made a deal. I said, give you $1,000. And I had a phonograph with a big horn. He wanted that. Or them two Model T. One phonograph. One Model T. Well, he wanted the two Model T's. So that's what I give him. We got home. I went to work the next day. Come back early for some reason. And Connie said, say that guy from was up here called. And he said, well, he was gone. His secretary, his bullshit was secretary, girlfriend, I suppose, sold that tractor to somebody else. Oh, boy. But he could get you another one. No, no. I called up. Well, I said, Cook. Cook had got wind of this here. And uh, oh, through the Oscar swap meet. Yeah, Oscar Cook, my old buddy. And anyhow, I said, you know why I want that tractor? Well, he'd already got the thousand. She sold it for $900. She thought it really did something. And he, and somehow or the other, Van Horn, knew the banker and got that check back out of there. She already put the check in the depository. Oh, and, and I got the best author. Yeah, I got, well, Hoster Cook had, all he would have gone do with that tractor is ready to cause trouble with Harold. And then Harold got that. Well, then Harold says, I called him up. He said, I got $1,000 in it, and two Model T's was about another seven, 800. And, and, and But I was, Harold says, it's not fair that I get all these parts and do this. He said, I will put the tractor together and fix it, keep track, and when I'm done, I'll sell it to you and Bill, or when I'm truck my family to. And that's what he done. Mm -hmm. But the reason it got sold earlier is because when Donald Sell finally got the one in Oklahoma, he wanted to borrow it. And I was fine with Harold, but Harold didn't want to leave me his place while he still owned it. Mm -hmm. So he sold, he, we made the deal. And he was more than fair on them. Mm -hmm. And he also said, if you think that's too much, uh, well, uh, it wouldn't do that. But I mean, he was very fair. And uh, that's how we got the little there. Well, oh yeah, then, uh, before that, I was up in Manitoba. Me and Eddie Ireland went out. He said, there's this Minneapolis up north here at uh, uh, Russell, Manitoba. And he said, it's a 2040. So we have to look at it. Well, they wouldn't sell it. But in the junk pile, I saw the part of the crankshaft and the counterweight of a little devil heart par. I said, what's that from? Well, that's from one of them two silver heckle heart pars. He said, we had it here. And uh, we had good luck with it. He said, we run it till we quit using the tractor. Then we took the motor out and run it stationary and finally blew it up. But they had their toolbox, all that original stuff in a shed. Wow. So I told Harold about that. Him and Hyman went up there that summer and got that stuff. And when he brought it up here to the show, the first time he had them down running it. Oh, so it worked out. The yeah. Wildmans was their name. Yeah. Real fine people.